My first mountain bike, a Trek hardtail, came with a stock Bontrager tires and they worked fine for about six months. Soon after, I copied Emily and went tubeless with a pair of GX Saguaro tires. They were a bit difficult to see and didn't last long in the desert trails of the southwest. In fact, Emily had more than one flat on these tires, so it made us launch our initial quest for the perfect tire. With the help of our local bike shop and some research, the outcome was the graduation to the Maxxis Minion DHR2 and DHF tires. We have used them on our bikes for the past 8 years. So why mess with perfection? With my latest bike, my skills have progressed and my riding style has become more aggressive. The front tire works, but I found myself sliding out on some of my turns or when the trail gets a little loose. Emily never liked the DHF for similar reasons. She came to call it that treacherous bastard and had the bike shop install Minion DHR's rear and front. I started to do some research and learned that the Asagai has a bit more grip in the turns. From what I read, the DHF is popular because it allows riders to drift into the side knobs. The Asagai has more knobs between the center and the sides, so it doesn't allow that particular feature. Since the tire seems more suited to my riding style, I decided to try them out. To make things more interesting, I went ahead and ordered a new rear tire, the Dissector, since it could be used as a rear tire and the tread reminded me of a lighter version of the Minion DHR2. Now that I've picked out what tires I wanted, I need to figure out the width, the tread compound, and what kind of casing is needed for my terrain. First, I wanted to change the tire width. I was running two sixes on both tires, which is about maximum for my 30 mm rim. If you were to stick them on a 25 mm rim, the tires tend to balloon out. Also, if you put a narrower tire on a wider rim, say 2.4 on a 40 mm rim, the narrower tires will square in, making the side knobs less effective. Maxxis WT, also known as Wide Trail, are specifically made for 30 to 35 mm rims. The front tire I decided on was a 2.5 WT and a 2.4 WT for the rear. Next, I had to pick a compound. I found the Asagai with a 3C Max Terra. The Max Terra is more durable than the alternative Max Grip. It uses a thinner soft compound on the shoulder knobs and a medium on the center knobs. However, the core of the knobs uses a hard compound which is great for desert riding conditions. The Max Grip uses a soft and medium compounds on the side and center knobs and a smaller core of the hard compound. It makes it better for wet conditions with softer trails. Finally, I needed to pick a sidewall protection. Most of the tires come in a 60 TPI casing, however the double down tires use 120 threads per inch. As the casing gets stronger, additional weight is added and the tires become less flexible. Tires with EXO are 60 TPI and have a flexible protective layer added to provide better protection without the additional weight and stiffness. The EXO Plus technology provides a butyl insert that provides more sidewall protection and a better seal to help prevent flats. However, it does add weight and the tires are less flexible. Finding tires during our current supply chain problems proved to be a challenge. I was able to find an Asagai in a 2.5 with a 3C Max Terra in EXO Plus casing. Unfortunately, there weren't many options for a dissector, and all I could find in a 2.4 was the 3C Max Grip with downhill casing. The DH casing is similar to Double Down and Overkill for my needs, but I went ahead and purchased it anyway. Before I install the new tires, let's take a look at the current bike weight. 35.16 with the dual compound 2.6 DHF and DHR. After I install the new tires, we'll see how much we lose or gain. Like all Maxxis tires, the installation went pretty smoothly. My installation method is to align the Maxxis logo with the valve stem and get the tire completely onto the rim. I always make sure the tire bead doesn't get caught up on the valve stem and everything aligns in the center of the rim. I remove the valve stem core for better airflow and use the compressor to seat the tire onto the rim. Once the tire is seated, I add sealant through the valve stem. I really like the orange seal sealant. It doesn't seem to clog up the valve stem like some other products. 
I pump air back into the tire before I reinstall the valve core to make it easier to finish up. Now that the wheels are back on the bike, let's take a look at the weight. 35.92. Looks like we gained almost a pound. Even though the tires are narrower, the extra casing and denser compound material adds some weight. So what is it like riding with these new tires? The first thing I notice is that the tires feel stiffer due to the stronger sidewalls and casing. The wider old tires with the basic dual compound absorbed a lot of the smaller rocks on the trail which made it for a more comfortable ride. The narrow tires seem more precise and don't feel as floaty. Even though there's more weight, I feel like I can climb a little bit better. On a few of my local trails with extreme short steep grades, I would get off and hike a bike. With the new tires, I can now climb them. I took the bike out to Brown's Ranch which has a lot of flat turns. I am not great at keeping speed in flat turns, but I am learning and this is where I ran into my problems with the old tires. The Asagai up front does feel better in the turns, especially in all the loose gravel over hard pack. I should note that the trails out here have a lot of crushed granite, what we commonly refer to as kitty litter, which is not the best for grip. The only issue I had with the tire was the gravel bits getting thrown up from the knobs. Over the past six months, I have taken the tires on slick rock, hard packed dirt, and loose rock, and the Asagai has held up well. This is my new favorite front tire. However, the rear has been another story. The dissector tread pattern works fine on the loose climbs and with the max grip compound, it sticks to the rocks quite well. Unfortunately, this compound just doesn't last out here in the desert. After a few months, the knobs were cracking and starting to break off the tires. It is expected for the rear tire to wear down quicker than the front, but not this fast. I'm sure if I found the tire in a Max Terra version, I wouldn't have anything to complain about. When I went to search for a replacement tire, I couldn't find any dissectors, so I went out and got the old standby, the Minion DHR2. I was able to find a Max Terra version in a 2.4 that was lighter than the dissector and should last longer in the dry, rocky terrain out here. About a month into this new combination, everything was going great. I did have my first tire puncture bashing through a rock garden on a downhill, but the sealant stopped the leak before I could insert a tire bacon plug. If I had the DH casing, this probably wouldn't have happened, but since this is such a rare occurrence, I think it was just some bad luck. Speaking of bad luck, a couple weeks later my rear hub blew out. It forced me to go out and purchase a new backup wheel and tire while the original was getting rebuilt in the shop. More of this will be explained in another video, but it did allow me the chance to try a third rear tire, the Maxxis Aggressor. This tire did not come in a 3C Max Terra option, but just runs on the standard dual compound. However, it was designed for rocky, dry conditions, and I found a 2.5 at a great price. The tire rolls fast due to the cross-country style tread down the center of the tire. It does have more aggressive side knobs, and so far it has been a good tire. It is not as sticky on the climbs as the DHR2, but it is lighter and faster, which makes it fun on the flats and downhills. So now that I've paired the Asagai with three different rear tires, which one would I recommend? Out here in the desert, with all the sharp rocks and cacti, my favorite rear tire is the good old Minion DHR2. It comes in the most options and is easy to find online. The Dissector and Aggressor are faster tires, but come in less sizes and compound options, and I'm just more concerned about traction than speed. I would also recommend avoiding the Max Grip compound, unless you live in a wet region with softer trails. The Max Terra is still going strong and that will be my compound of choice when purchasing Max's tires. Just note that the 3C Max Terra is a heavier and stiffer compound, so if you need that extra protection and want a softer feel, the standard dual compound may work well for you and save some weight. I highly recommend you check out the Max's website and source the part number to make sure you find the right size and compound combination. With the supply chain issues, you may be forced to buy tires from Amazon or eBay and you want to make sure you are getting the right one. After my experiences over the past six months and my recommendation, Emily has also decided to make the change. 
She is now sporting a 2.6 Asagai 3C Max Terra in the front and a 2.6 Minion DHR2 3C Max Terra EXO Plus in the rear. She feels the new tire helps with her cornering and she explodes out of the turns. She also states the tires feel glued to the ground. Can't argue with that. <laughs> 